if we enjoy drawing streetscapes, then we're going to come across many, many beautiful iron lamp posts. Here's one just outside the Musée de Louvre in Paris. So if I'm drawing a scene with these sort of lamp posts, how do I capture its charm and beauty most accurately and easily? The two things to try and focus on as best we can are scale and proportion and straightness. So for instance, how large is this lamp area compared to the post area? How large is this base in relation to the thinner section? And unfortunately, the absolute base of this post has been cut off, but I've got a very similar post here that just gives us an idea of the proportions. And a lamp post is much like a tower. We want to stack all the different components in as straight a line as we can. So let's start to draw. I'm drawing with a 0.3 millimeter fine line of black ink pen, uh, just drawing directly onto the paper in ink. So I start with this straight section because that then is going to be my guide, if you like, my ruler to try and keep the rest of the lamppost really nice and rigidly straight. So I put some marks above and below on the paper, not particularly with anything in mind to be at that point or to cover them, but simply to help me align my marks, whatever structures I, I then go to draw above the top and the bottom of the straight pole, just to help me keep everything centered. It is very off-putting in drawings that are otherwise really nicely done when the lampposts lean, or worse still, I think, even bend at different points. So just establishing now where these brackets will be and the actual glass shade. Now, of course, because these lampposts are so tall, from this distance, we're actually looking up slightly. And so we see something of the underneath rim of the actual lamp area. So I do want to capture that with the curves and with what we see slightly of the far side of the globe. Now there is a little bit of decorative wrought iron work around the glass. So I want to indicate that without getting bogged down in trying to draw it precisely. Again, this is just like leaves on a tree. We draw the effect of what's there. We don't draw the exactness of it. I could have done this little knob on top, just a little bit more to the left. And by a little bit, I mean maybe half a millimeter. Sometimes there's not much in it. And so now I start going down the post and you can see again, I'm just aligning my thinking, my sight, my hand and my planning with what I've already drawn to give myself every chance of now doing these sections in a nice straight line. And the way I like to approach areas of objects such as this is rather than trying to do a, if you like, a continuous curving line down each side, which I find very difficult to do, I like to establish the shapes that we see and draw those shapes, stacking the shapes on top of one another. Again, this is often more creating the effect of what we're seeing rather than the exactness. But I think it works rather well as long as we can keep it nice and symmetrical around this center line, which is mostly in my imagination. But again, I could have put a series of dots going down in a straight line from the base of the straight part of the post. And that would have helped me align things even more easily. And I don't think it would have really shown up so much at the end when everything else was in place. So trying to add a few little decorative elements and then work out where the sides, the four sides of this squ squarish larger part of the base are going to sit. It's also a bit tricky because this is now going to what's off the page of my reference. And in fact, when I was drawing this, I didn't realize that. In fact, I was going off the page of what the camera was recording. 
So I'm sorry about that. I, I do slide this up in a moment when I finish drawing the base and I had a look at it and realized what I'd done. I finished up drawing my lamppost a bit larger than the one in the drawing, which is what caused the issue. And I'm just finishing that lower section off now and checking how the corners are drawn looking at that photo on the far left. And I've just realized what I've done, so now I adjust things and you can see a little more clearly what's happening. But pretty much the post is done. This is where it's, uh, it can be easy to go a bit far. Knowing when to stop in a drawing is important. And of course, it makes a difference whether this is a drawing of a Paris lamppost or whether it's a drawing of a street and this lamppost is just a part of it with other things even more prominent or important or significant to the overall scene. And there we have it, a Paris lamppost. As you can see, personally, I prefer to stack the shapes as it were on top of each other as if each of them were separate with a hole in the middle and I could just drop them down. But Whichever way we draw them, the important focus is that we're working at keeping the entire lamppost straight. And that means that as we go down or up, depending which way we like to draw them, we are always looking at what we've drawn and we're just aligning our thinking with whatever part we've already drawn. It's also worth remembering how perspective affects them. Let's say we have our eye level here. Then if we have a lamp behind this one, say here, then this shows how this section is really going to be sitting there. And this has to fit here. And if we have another one going further back, notice how as I'm drawing these lampposts further back, I'm not just drawing them smaller because of the perspective angles involved, but I'm also drawing them with a lighter touch, with less detail. I'm wanting my lines to be a little bit thinner, a little bit finer. I might possibly even have swapped from a 0 0.3 to a 0 0.2 pen. In fact, I have. I'm just looking at the pen now, I did change to a lighter pen to help me create a lighter effect. But it's not just that I'm drawing with a lighter pen, I am also doing less detail. My lines, my shapes are more suggestive than they have been for the first one. There is less exactness. The most important thing is to line up the more obvious changes of shape of form in the lamp from top to bottom on those perspective angles and so forth. It's important that we line up the various components of our lamps with the perspective angles that the viewing position of this street 
creates. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. If you ever need to or want to draw some of the beautiful lampposts in the streets of the major cities of the world, I hope this has given you some ideas of things to think about to create the best result you possibly can. But whatever you're drawing, however you're drawing it, have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.